And they went forward and they preached the gospel, good news to every creature everywhere. You got to um, you got to feel for the disciples. Uh, you know, they came to know Jesus in in Galilee, and they came to follow him in Galilee, and they f- ultimately fell in love with him in uh, Galilee. Uh, it must have been powerful to be with him in person. Like he had words that were profound. He um, he had a way of encapsulating things that. Um, that no, no one else, wisdom that no one else had ever heard. But he healed people, everyone around him healed. And he fed thousands of people just from a few scraps of loaves of bread. And it must have been just electrifying being that close to him. And then, then comes the resurrection, again comes the crucifixion. He gets hung upon the cross and they are so scared they run for their lives. They hide. And then comes another moment. He comes back to them. He comes back and he appears, and it's not just an ordinary uh, sort of appearance. The, the Gospels go to great lengths to explain the physicality of his, of his resurrection. That, uh, give me some bread to eat. Look, here are my hands. Pick your finger, stick your finger in, my, in the hole in my hands. In my, put your hand in my side, he says. And they were elated. And they were delighted, and they had him for 40 days. And then today, the ascension we celebrate today, he leaves them again. This roller coaster must be overwhelming for them. But today is different. Today, after 40 days of living with Christ, today they know something different because they don't hesitate. And they preach the gospel to every creature. And they, they know that the Holy Spirit is with them. They, they, they are on fire. Something has changed inside them. They now know that they're called to give witness. You see, the ascension is more about mission than absence. More about mission to proclaim the good news. The mission to share and to witness what they have experienced. Now, this this sharing, this, this mission has a movement attached to it. They are called to go to all corners of the world. They are to proclaim the good news to all creatures everywhere. But the movement also, that's the horizontal movement. There's also a vertical movement where they are called to allow the Holy Spirit in their lives. They are called to feel the love of God in their lives. They are called to be transformed by this love of God in their own lives. You see, that is the first movement, that movement which is so critical that we feel loved for who we are, and that we understand and really internalize that love in our hearts, not just on an intellectual level in the head, but that we allow it in, because once we, as I said last week, once we allow that love into our hearts, it transforms us completely. And the message is God loves us. The English have a a wonderful way of putting this. The good news is that God loves you completely. The bad news, he loves everyone else completely too. (laughs) But listen, bad news, of course, is good news and all around. But the the challenge then is, is this horizontal movement. This horizontal movement where we are called to be the church in the world. Where we're called to share this love and to witness this love in the world. And where are we called to do it? To every corner of the earth. But where we're called in particular, it's not enough that we just do it here. And it's wonderful that we all love our, our, our families. But even thieves and, and the worst of humanity does that. We're called to be disciples of Christ. We're called to love those who are on the furthest extremities. We're called to reach out to those who feel least loved. What Pope Francis calls the peripheries of society. We're called to reach out to them and to fold them back in. And and that is the mission. That movement is critical for us. Father Timothy Ratcliffe um, 
is the former superior of the Dominicans. And he was invited by Pope Francis uh, to give a, the meditations before the Synod on Synodality. And one of those meditations uh, called uh, the home that God makes his home with us and we make our home with God, what we call church, he, he gives this beautiful metaphor of this, of how we do this. It's called uh, of, of baking bread. I mean, you think of how you knead the bread. You fold the outside and you put it back into the center. And you fold the outside and put it back into the center and you push it down and the center becomes the periphery and the periphery then becomes the center. And you keep just doing this over and over again. That's how bread is made. It's a beautiful image for what we're called to be as church. We're called to go to the furthest extremities, the furthest peripheries, and fold them back in to the center of who we are as church. So who are those people in the extremities? The immigrants is one group. Whether legal or illegal, they are people on the move seeking a new home, and we are not called to call into the politics of it. We're called to come into the humanity of it, reach out to them, and fold them back in to the center of who we are as church. Those people who, are, who feel so marginalized, like the LBGDQ community, we're called to reach out to them, fold them back in to the center, and make them feel at home in the center of our church. We're called to reach out to those who are homeless and broken by circumstances, whether chosen by themselves or others, and fold them back in. We're called to reach out to the divorced and remarried, and again, the same thing, fold them in to the center. So there's no longer any peripheries, but there is one table at the Lord's table. Now the truth be told is that as we do this, we have to understand that often the church itself is the, is the one that wounds. And we have to acknowledge that we're an imperfect, we're an imperfect church. But where else, where else do we go? Every, every other human institution is as equally as imperfect. Well, what are we called to do? Because we have so much baggage. I mean, the church, we, we can't ignore the baggage. When you think of all those who have been abused by priests in the past, again, they are on the periphery. We need to fold them back in and make them feel part, the center of the church. This, this process of, of baking, this process of making who we are as church is what it means. This movement is a movement of love. This mission is a mission of love. We first receive the love of God directly into our hearts, and then we are called to spread and to witness that love to all. Every one of us, you and I, not some theoretical heads of churches, you and I are the church. This is the mission of the Ascension and the Pentecost, the church of today. And we do so in this broken church, in our church. This is who we are. This is where God makes his home with us, and this is where we make our home with God. We call it to do so. We have to be faithful to sharing that love with others and folding those who least feel loved into the center of our lives. Uh, Timothy Ratliff, uh, Ratliff, when he quoted a beautiful poem by uh, Carlo Corretto, who was one of the, the, um, the brothers of, um, of the desert, the desert fire, and, and uh, I want to quote just a, a small part of that. It's too long to uh, memorize it, but it's just so beautiful, I want to get it right. Um, he was with a group called the Charles de Foucault um, uh, Community, a, a group uh, um, committed to nonviolent um, sort of testimony of love in the world. And this is what he talks about in char charge with the, his own ambiguity of living in the church that he loves so much. He says, how much I must criticize you, my church, yet how much I love you. How have you made me suffer, and yet I owe you so much. I should like to see you destroyed, and yet I need your presence. You have given me such scandal, and yet you have made me understand holiness. How often I have felt like slamming the door of my soul in your face, 
and how often I have prayed that I might die in your sure arms. No, I cannot be free of you, for I am one with you, even though not completely. Then to where would I go? To build another? But I cannot build another without the same defects, for those are my defects. They're the defects that I bear within me too. And again, if I build one, it will only be my church and no longer the church of Christ. My friends, the movement we are called to, this mission we are called to, is one of love. Love to the peripheries of society, and we are called to fold them back in to the center and keep doing it over and over again. If we do that, we will be, we will accomplish what the Lord has given to us, to preach the gospel to every preacher to the ends of the earth.